Hey guys, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. Welcome to the very messy kitchen. We're working today. We have a working kitchen today, every day, all the days. It always looks like this. I'm not gonna lie. Today I am canning. I am processing the potatoes that I got from my Costco haul that, I uh, check that out here if you didn't yet. Um, I got, is it 15? Well, I think it was 15 pounds of potatoes. Now I got two bags of potatoes and in that video I showed you guys the wrong bag of potatoes. I got russet and I got gold. The gold I got for canning purposes. The russet I got for just, you know, this month eating recipes and things like that. The reason I'm gonna use gold for canning instead of the russet is because russet has more starch to it and it kind of doesn't can as well as gold. Less starch means it kind of holds to holds together better in um, in the, for the canning process. So that is what I did today. Now I thought I had the camera on while I was peeling and cutting up the potatoes, had this lovely little chat with myself about things you want to look for when you're, when you're doing these potatoes. So I'll just tell you, I cut out all the bad spots, any of the weak spots, the, the soft spots, things like that, anything that looked questionable. Uh, I'm not going to process the couple really green tomatoes that were in that bag. 99% of them look great. Uh, in total, I had like two really small potatoes that I took out of that bag, but all the rest of them look really good. So this is what we have now. I've got, I'm gonna uh, cook them here. Let me close this door. I'm gonna cook them here just lightly, and then I'm going to put them in my canner. I got my pressure canner here. I'm gonna turn this on just to kind of warm up that water a little bit and get my jars all set up. Uh, while I'm cutting, I didn't put enough water in here, but while I'm cutting them, a uh, trick that a friend of mine who's been canning like forever told me to do is put some distilled or spring or, you know, clean, not tap water in a big old bucket here, a big old pan and add a little bit of citric acid and that kind of keeps them from turning brown. So I did that, clearly not enough, but I did that and I kind of mixed it around a little bit. So now I'm going to drain this, rinse them cook them lightly, and then get them packed. My dog will not stop barking today. So you're going to have to excuse the barking. He is strongly protesting being in his kennel, which is required when I'm doing anything involving food or filming or not supervising him. We love him, but he's a spaz. So if you hear the barking from time to time, try and cut as much out as possible. I'm just gonna have to go ahead and apologize in advance. He's a spaz. to give a quick mention on how I'm cutting these. I don't want to cut them too small and honestly I wasn't paying attention with some of them because I was trying to multitask <laughs> and I cut some of them too small. Um, they'll probably get mushy, they won't hold together super well, but I'm just going to try and mix some of the bigger with the smaller and we'll get what we get. Honestly most of the canned potatoes that, um, that I use, I used for making mashed potatoes. So really if they get mushy it doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to mash them up anyway. So I'm gonna guess I have in here probably five to six quarts. That's my guess. We'll see what we get. So what I'm gonna use now is some distilled water. I have a ton of this because when I make soap, I use distilled water. You can also, uh, most of the time I just use my Berkey water, but I literally just filled the Berkey. So uh, we're gonna just use the distilled today. So I just turned this on. Uh, it's probably gonna sit for, I don't know, six, seven minutes or so while I get all of the jars. I just kinda wanna rinse them out and get them ready, warm them up a bit. Uh, and then we'll be ready to load these and get them in the can. Funny story about my stove. It is incredibly old. So before this, we had a glass top stove. I liked my glass top, top stove. However, I could not pressure can on my glass top stove. So we bought a Camp Chef. Love that camp chef, it's great. But it's not so great when you have to pressure can outside in the rain. So the new plan was to get a coil stove because this is not a permanent house. If it was, we would totally make this a gas range, but because it's not, we're not gonna. 
So we got this uh, lovely little electric used, super used refurbished stove, stove for like $200 from a local recycled appliance shop. Worked great. However, you see that smoke? <laughs> that is coming from the burner every time I turn it on, all the time. So I really try not to use all but one of the burners. It's the only one that doesn't smoke. So I've got six jars here. I've got my rings, made sure there weren't any like dents or any issues in here. A little something on there. That one's good. You know, the purpose of the band is to put the, um, or keep that lid in place to be able to seal. So your, the integrity of your band is just as important as the integrity of the lid. But this one is not giving a good seal on this jar. You might have a loose spot in here with the lid. I've had that happen before. All right, so these are ready to put into jars. Um, I had a couple jars that had cracks, so I had to wash a couple new ones. And I wanna show you. I want to show you. I don't know if you can even see that. Oh, there goes the dumb dog. Okay, you see that teeny tiny little crack. I barely, barely caught that. So, and that doesn't even look like a crack. It just looks kind of like an imperfection in the glass. You really got to check really, really well. Next thing I'm going to do is put in some salts. I like to, so I'm going to. I'm just gonna put a teaspoon into each jar. We salt our potatoes anyway when we eat them. So the salt's already in there, it's in the potatoes. Already gives them that flavor. It is not required, it's just my preference. So I'm gonna fill them up like this and give them about an inch, which is like to right there, that line right there. And we're gonna do that follow. So these potatoes, they're not soft. They're still very much firm. I'm just kind of making them hot. And uh, from what I understand, the purpose of doing this, because again, you're not cooking, because if you did that, they would be mush. You don't wanna do that. Um, the purpose is because there is a type of bacteria that uh, potatoes are exposed to in the ground and the purpose of getting it really hot is to kill that bacteria to lower your risk of it of developing botulism in here. So between that and the process of pressure canning and the high temperatures you get in there, we should be good. I think some people do raw pack potatoes. I choose not to, this is just my better doing it the suggested way I am by no means a rebel canner because let me tell you once you have E. coli and cryptosporidium you don't ever want to experience that again or anything worse so I am play it safe do it the suggested way kind of person and I always will be seven quarts for a 15 pound bag of the russet no i'm sorry take that back see i'm doing it again the gold potatoes gold potatoes 15 pound bag seven quarts very nice i'm happy with it so yes the reason that i do quarts is because we are a large family we are a family of six and when i make mashed potatoes my people eat some mashed potatoes uh, so we will actually probably go through two quarts in one meal so this will be one, two, three meals. Uh, if I just do kind of standalone now, if I make it in something like a shepherd's pie or something like that, then I can get one jar 
from a meal and that would work too. We are done with this water. I don't want to use this water anymore because look at that. We don't want to put that in there. That is just starchy water and we don't want that. So I'm going to get new distilled water and we're going to fill these jars and get them in the canner. I just did. Don't let this sucker lean over. You're gonna end up getting more of the water out of the jar. Okay. I was a little concerned about how many jars I could get in this canner because I can't remember if I've ever totally filled this thing. I know it sounds a little ridiculous, but I guess I can get seven. Oh yeah, seven easy. There's six and one in the middle. about it smoking. Now this was smoking too. All right, see the steam coming out? Don't do this, it's hot. <laughs> it's been going for almost 10 minutes. I'm gonna make sure I give it the full 10 minutes to get up there and then I'm gonna put the weight on and start my timer. Okay, it is now almost six o'clock. This was venting steam for about 10 minutes. I put the weight, 10 pounds on there. It's now giving a gentle rock and I'm gonna start the timer for 40 minutes. Okay, so 40 minutes is done now. So I just turned off the stove. And when this little button goes down, where is it, right back here? When this goes down, then I'm gonna take this off and just let it vent for a while before I, uh, take them out. So I'll show you that when we get it back. It's been 40 minutes. Waiting for it. The dog is still trying to bark. Gosh. Okay, so I turned off the timer. I am letting this drop pressure. So this little button here, you can see it still popped up. But once that goes down, then I will take the top off here and I'm going to let it sit. It says 10 minutes, let it cool. I'm just gonna go put the kids to bed at that point in time because we're about to sit down and eat dinner. It's not gonna hurt it any. And then when I'm done, I will come down here and take everything out, let it sit here, label it overnight, and then I'll put it away in the morning. All right, I just opened everything up. Nothing cracked, nothing broke, fantastic. No matter how much I can, I always get nervous. Something's gonna crack or explode or break. I don't know, I'm just paranoid like that. Let's get this out and put it over here on the towel and let it sit until tomorrow morning. So it's the next day. I was excited to get everything on the shelf this morning and forgot to film, but here it is. Everything looks good. All seven jars sealed beautifully. Had no issues. They didn't make too big of a mess. And I wrote the dates on the top. And there they go. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the process canning potatoes, store-bought potatoes. Make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button and the notification bell to stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be canning those uh, oranges that we bought from Costco. So make sure, again, you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can watch that video. I've never done it before. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.